one. We'll give it a second to actually go live. Okay. Hi, this is Jessica Hagman here at Alden Library, and we today are going to be answering some questions that new students have about using the library, and we are delighted to be joined by Eric Brown from the Academic Advancement Center. Um, so Eric, before we get started, could you tell us a little bit about what you do in the Academic Advancement Center? Sure. So I am the Academic Enrichment Coordinator for the Academic Advancement Center, and I help out in most all areas uh, downstairs uh, in the library. Um, and of course the Academic Advancement Center will be getting a big move upstairs. You can actually um, see behind us the lovely construction, you actually can't see very much, but um, there's a lot of construction on the second floor right now because the Academic Advancement Center um, will be moving upstairs once the construction is all done. So we're really excited to have them upstairs. Um, so many of you who come into the library have questions about how to access their services, um, tutoring, writing center, all that stuff, and we're so excited that they'll be right there on the second floor and easy for everyone to access. Um, so let's start off with some questions that people have about the um, Academic Advancement Center. And of course, this is a live Q&A, so if you do have any questions, please pop onto Facebook and type them out, and we'll try our best to answer them. Um, and in true library fashion, if we can't get you an answer now, we'll get back to you with one later. Um, but okay, so Eric, could you just tell us there's a lot of different services that you offer in the Academic Advancement Center, like tutoring and supplemental instruction. Could you just give us kind of an overview of the different services you have? Sure. So uh, under sort of the umbrella of tutoring services, we have peer tutoring, which is one-on-one, -on -one, one-hour appointments made through TutorTrack, and we'll send a link later uh, to know how to get onto that. We also have the Math and Science Center, which is one-on-one -on -one during the daytime and usually migrates into a group setting during the evening hours. Um, to sort of transition from that, Supplemental Instruction, or SI, uh, is entirely group-based. And something very cool about SI is that the Supplemental Instruction leaders will have been in the class that day, so they'll know what the lecture is about, so they can cater their activities um, towards that. We also have Study Skills Coaching. This is for when you know the content already, but you're like, how do I study for this course? So they can uh, help you out with anything from time management uh, to exam prep or even helping you out um, in making your notes more active. Oh, cool. And then we also uh, house the College Achievement Program, <laughs> uh, which is a very cool program offering things such as free printing, um, you get a private advisor in addition to your major advisor, and for more information, we'll send a link for that as well. Great. Yeah, we'll put links to all these things in the, um, the Facebook post. If you're coming to this later, um, we'll you'll have the links there. And of course, you can always let contact me or any librarian here or anyone at the Academic, Academic Advancement Center. Um, I have some questions about uh, supplemental instruction because we do get questions about that. Um, what kind of classes have supplemental instruction? I know it's not all of them, right? It's right. So ones. it is not all the classes. Normally, these are the most challenging courses in math and science. Um, for example, we have accounting, we have biology, chemistry, usually the 1,000 to 2,000 levels um, are the courses that we have for that. So it's not all for SI. Okay. Um, do you have to sign up for it in advance or can you drop in? How's that work? You actually will just drop in. Just check okay. on our website to look at the calendar. Uh, find the class that you're interested in going to SI for and just literally join the group. Um, Supplemental instruction is housed in Morton Hall, sometimes Bentley, okay. um, so it is not inside the Academic Advancement Center. Okay. And when, do the, when are those usually held? Is there like a set time or does it depend on the class? There is a set time. It's usually 6 to 9 p.m. Uh, they're hour-long sessions. Um, we recommend that students go at least once a week. Um, we do have data that shows that students who are going once a week are earning at least a half to a whole letter grade oh, wow. um, better than they would have if they didn't go. That's great. Yeah. Um, so, and who, maybe you said this already, but who runs this? Is it a student in the class, or how does They that are undergraduate students who have both taken the class beforehand, and like I said, they'll be in the class currently with, not directly with you, but they'll have been in the class to learn the lecture for that day as well. Okay, so they really know what's going on in that they specific really class. It's not yeah. just a general knowledge. Right. Okay. Um, so, is that what makes it different from kind of other tutoring, would you say? It or? does, as well as the group. Um, aspect of it all, a lot more activity based, um, more of collaboration mm -hmm. together. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
So I guess let's move on to the Writing Center because we do get a lot of questions about the Writing Center. I think they kind of naturally go together with um, library resources. We're often working with people who are writing a paper and they need to kind of go, um, they work with us on finding information and they need to go to that next step. So um, how does one like make an appointment with the Writing Center? So you can make an appointment at least a week in advance and you're going to go onto the website and you're going to find the schedule there on that website. Um, if you're familiar with Google Calendars, it, it appears um, to be a lot like a Google Calendar. You'll find the date, time, and simply click it. Okay, great. Um, do you have to make an appointment, or is there any sort of walk-in option? You don't actually have to make an appointment. It is walk-in as well. Um, they do offer time slots. Again, take a look at the website. Make sure that those slots aren't already taken. Um, just walk in if you want to idea build. Make sure your paragraphs look good. Just come and see them. Um, and do you have an idea of the hours on that? Is it like all day or anything? So it's usually 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Friday and they are closed on the weekends. Okay. Um, and is there, um, is it just undergraduate students or can graduate students? Graduate students can use the Writing Center as well. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, although there is, um, in case any of you are grad students, there is a Graduate Writing and Research Center that's also in the library which is separate from you all right it's not part of your overview so um, it can be a little confusing but that is a separate service that's on the third floor and of course if you have any questions about that let us know and we'll get you connected with them um, okay is there what about the um, study skills can you tell us a little bit more about how that works is it like a class someone takes or how does that work um, so study skills coaching is you come in and you're actually going to talk with a either a professional staff member or a graduate assistant so you're going to get an inside track on how to study better so something I would suggest if you want to come in with your current notes with your book um, with something like the PowerPoint that the uh, instructor had you print off and we can help you be a lot more active with your studying um, show you some tips on tr tips and tricks um, such as the Pomodoro method if anyone's ever heard of that oh, I love the Pomodoro method. Yeah. it's my favorite <laughs> so getting as much done in 25 minutes as possible and then taking a break um, and then we can also show you some cool things that you do, can do to sort of make your notes more colorful um, the more colorful your notes the better so remember that okay I hadn't heard that before yes um, I do see a question on here. Someone actually asked, how much does tutoring cost? Okay, so tutoring services, um, if you're talking about supplemental instruction under the umbrella is no cost. Math and Science Center is no cost as well. The only thing that does um, cost is peer tutoring, the one-on-one, -on -one, one hour. That okay. is $10 per session. Okay. And that um, is that paid through, like, how do students pay for that? Is the it? student would um, basically give the tutor um, cash upon okay, it's coming to the negotiate with, with the tutor. With okay. the tutor yeah. So they start the session after that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, I don't see any more. Is there anything else you think we should know about the um, academic advancement center? Um, I can say that if you are looking for another option with peer tutoring, if you wanted to check out the programs that maybe we have through our website, or contact the coordinator, Tiffany Patterson Hedges. Um, certain programs will offer um, payment for a peer tutoring session. So okay. that's something to definitely check out if you were like, $10, just check out those programs. Okay. And if someone has just like, they're struggling with a class and they're not sure which program to use, can they just mm -hmm. come to your office and be like, I don't, I don't know what to do, I don't know if I need SI, or can they just kind of show up there and you'll direct them? Sure, yes. If you um, even wanted to come out and say, do I test these out one by one? Um, what would be best with that? We can show you the differences in the programs, and we would encourage you to try them all out. Um, and don't wait until midterms or finals. You can start the first day if you'd like. Great. Yeah, that's so important. So many people wait until it's so much harder to, to get back on track, or they don't know if they don't feel like they should know what to do. But you right. should definitely, um, you know, check with you you all. It's, I, I think here at Ohio University. Um, people are really good about being supportive of students, um, and they, they try to do the best they can to help. And I think the Academic Advancement Center is such a huge part of that. So, uh, Soapbox, stop by the Academic Advancement Center. They're downstairs on the first floor right now, but pretty soon they will be on the second floor in the fall. Um, and we're so, like I said, like I said, we're so looking forward to having them there. Um, so speaking of questions, you have some, maybe you get these questions too downstairs about like kind of library stuff since you are there. Right. Um, what could you maybe um, 
talk about some of the questions you think students might have about using the library? Sure, yeah. I've got some questions here, um, including, do you have textbooks for students? That's, that's such a huge question, the first week of classes. Um, and unfortunately, the answer is it depends. Um, like so many of our questions, it's um, we, we try to, instructors can work with us to put a book on reserve. So sometimes you can come to the fourth floor um, and we have a copy of the book that you can check out for two hours in the library and we have scanners. Um, so that is potentially an option. Um, some professors or instructors have worked with us to do um, online course reserves or some sort of textbook alternative where you do an online textbook. Um, so it might be that. Um, and then sometimes we can even get copies of books through Ohio Link or in our collections. Um, so it really depends on the class and what book they're using and how popular or how new that book is. Um, but it's definitely worth checking with us to see whether we can get a copy. Because sometimes we can, um, especially with like um, if you're doing novels for like a literature class or a textbook that's a little bit older. Uh, I think it's always worth checking. Um, and if, of course, I would say if you have questions about your book or it's not clear, um, you should definitely check with your instructor too. Like I don't think they're you know likely to be upset with you if you ask questions about is this book on reserve or um, you know as the semester gets closer, they should get you information about that. But don't hesitate to ask if you have questions. Cool. That's like and a theme. Like don't, theme. <laughs> don't be afraid to ask if you have questions. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that should be the motto. Yes. Um, so along those lines, I know a lot of students have to print many, many things. <laughs> yes. um, the writing assignments, mm -hmm. maybe even a textbook on PDF. Do mm -hmm. you offer printing? We do. Um, we are so far from the paperless universe, right? Like I thought by now maybe we'd be paperless. But no, we still have printers. We have a lot of printers in the library, um, the largest number on the second floor. Um, and you um, pay for that with your Bobcat cash. So um, if you have money, you can either add money online through their website or you can, we have a machine here in the library where you can add cash. But all you do is use any of our computers. Um, you can even use your computer to upload to a website. And then you just go to one of the printers, swipe your card, um, and then, or enter your Ohio ID and, and it will, uh, or your password, and it will say, here's the documents you've printed, um, which ones you actually sent to the printer, which ones do you want to print. Um, and that's three cents a page for single sided, or five cents a page for double sided. Um, so you do save a penny when you print double sided. Um, so there's a lot of printing here. It's a pretty common activity. Um, if you use the like print your own from your own device option, you could even send something to the printer on your way to class, stop here and pick it up. You know, you're printing wow. your paper. Um, it's, we, we try to make it as easy as possible. But of course, when you get here, if it's not working, or you have any questions, um, you know, let us know. Um, becoming a broken record about that. Um, we do have color printers too here on the second floor. So if you need to print something, um, I think that's 25 cents a page for like a letter size and then 50 cents for larger. So even some like projects that you're doing, um, if you want to print something in color, you can do that here as well. Great. Okay, so where are the quiet places <laughs> um, to go and study? That is another good question because it's, it's this, I mean, this building is huge. You walk in here and it's not, um, always clear where to go, where to study. So I would say if you're looking for quiet space, um, we're on the second floor right now. You definitely don't, the second floor is not going to be your quiet spot. It's much more open group study. So if you're looking for really like silent study, I would go to the fourth floor. There's a, a quiet study area, like a very quiet study room on the fourth floor. It overlooks um, Scripps Hall and the Scripps Amphitheater. Um, and then on the fifth floor in the, um, in the wings as well, there is another quiet study area. Um, there actually will be on the walls, there are little like traffic light signs that try to help us communicate about the different um, types of quiet. So there's like this floor is pretty much, I don't know if you can, there's one over there in the corner um, on the column. So this floor is green because it's definitely okay to work with groups and talk here. Um, we have lots of group study rooms. Um, but the floors that have like the yellow, that's meant to be, you know, you can talk but try to keep quiet until you'll find those on the third floor, kind of the open areas on the fourth floor. Um, and then that red is don't talk, otherwise people will get upset with you because you're you're not <laughs> going with the the rule traffic rules of um, being quiet. So that can help you get an idea of where to go um, when you come here to look for different spaces. Great, great. Um, so how does someone get help for any of the services here at the library? A good question. So we um, we have two desks that you can stop at if you just as you come in you have a question. So on the second floor where we are now, just behind um, all the construction right now in the elevators, there is a desk that you can come in. 
um, and there'll be usually a full-time staff and a student member there and you can talk to them about whatever you need. Um, same thing on the fourth floor, so if you come in off of College Green and you're heading um, into the library, uh, there's another desk there as well. And that's where the reserves are in movies. Um, but really, if you don't know where to get information, you should just ask at any desk and we'll make sure you get to the right place. Um, in addition to the in-person help, we do also do um, chat through our website. So if you're in the library, some people do this from in the library, they don't want to lose their seat um, during finals, for example, when it's busy. Um, or maybe you're at home and you just have a question about I need to find this thing. Um, so we do chat question and answer quite a bit, actually. We do a lot of um, fairly in-depth research questions there sometimes, which I think is kind of um, surprising, but it actually can be a really good way to talk to someone. Um, and then we even have a chat number, which I don't recall, or a text number, which I don't recall off the top of my head, but I will put in the comments, um, that if you're in the library somewhere and um, maybe you need help finding a book or uh, you're not sure where to go or whatever it is, um, you can text, and that actually will go to whoever is at the chat service as well. Um, so pretty much there's always someone around to answer questions whenever this building is open, um, and whenever the second, and I guess in the fall, the fourth floor will be open. So that's from... Sunday at noon until Friday at 10 p.m. There's pretty much always someone here who can answer questions. And that's, um, you know, of course we can help you find information, but if you're, you know, where's this building? Where is, you know, how do I find someone the, the tutoring services? Where's the writing center? Um, we answer all sorts of questions. And um, I think you'll find in the library that if someone can't answer your question, they'll, they'll find someone who can, if at all possible. We wouldn't say you know, sorry, you're, you're out of luck. That's not my, my job. It's just not how right. we work. My, much like sure. you, I'm sure, too, that it's um, we try our best to reach out and help people. So right. um, whatever kind of question it is, even if you're not sure who can actually answer it, maybe it's not us, but we can probably find someone who can. And I will say I've used the chat online. Oh, you have? Okay. And it's very quick, and I really like it. <laughs> it is. It's such a, um, yeah, I like. I actually like talking to people yeah. that way. It's a little, especially with research questions, a mm -hmm. little bit more, you know, if I need to look for something, I can, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of a little you can copy easier. out what was written so exactly you can print yeah it out or write it down go find yeah. something and i think you can even email a transcript to yourself so if you had a conversation about oh you should search for this thing you could have a, a transcript copy so you don't have to remember to write down you know when you go back to your desk and right yeah they inevitably forget what someone told you i like it um so this last question i think both of us could answer um is are you hiring students Oh, yeah, so we, we hire a lot of students. We couldn't do what we do without students here. We, they sell books and they answer questions at the desk. Um, we hire a lot of work-study students. Um, so definitely if you have work-study and are interested in working here, take a look at um, through the work-study system. And then also if anything else comes open, you can also see student jobs at OhioUniversityJobs.com. So check there. Um, so how does that work? With that? Of course, you're hiring tutors, right? So how does tutors, that work? supplemental instruction, leaders. Um, just simply go on our website. That's ohio.edu/aac. Very simple to remember. Um, check out which one that you'd like to apply for, and look at the qualifications, and send in your resume. We would love to look at it. Do you mostly do that at the beginning of the semester? Is it like throughout the year? It or? is a rolling basis. Okay. Um, if you're interested in becoming a tutor in the middle of the semester, go for it. Just send us your stuff, and we'll look at it. Okay. Um, I don't see any more questions here, but of course, like we said, if you do have any questions, put them in the comment box and we'll get back to you or any of the many ways. We told you to get in touch with us up at the Academic Advancement Center when you get here in the fall. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us yeah, live on great. Facebook and we'll talk to you later.